Hey guys, welcome back to my Crafters Companion YouTube channel. I hope you are well since the last time I've seen you right here on YouTube. I hope you've uh, been uh, been able to find a little bit of time to get creative, of course, within the Easter holidays there. Maybe you had a little bit of a break. Maybe you were working like I was. Uh, whatever you've done, I hope you had a lovely weekend anyway. Now, when it comes to the Easter weekend, I was on Hobby Maker here in the UK. And what I'm going to do is one of the demos that I kind of uh, briefly done I'm going to do in the full steps right here today on this tutorial here now it's involving our mirror pads it's also involving our scoreboard so we're going to be making a box but we're going to be making a custom size box I'm going to step you through how you can make a custom size box when it comes to well whatever it is that you're that you're needing maybe it's little gifts maybe it's little novelty things maybe maybe it's a card maybe whatever it is you're wanting to then make a box but of course you want to then make that box around the size of the project or the card or of course the gift that you are making so that's what we're going to do here uh you know we do do it quite a lot on certainly crafters tv or hobby maker but we don't always have the time to fully uh explain in full details and then if we do we tend to do it every now and again so i thought let's do that let's have uh, a tutorial here where we just go right back to the basics of course when it comes to things such as box making and i can step you through certainly the way that i like to do it measurement wise how i like to do it when it comes to our scoreboard now before we dive on thank you so much to everyone that does continue to subscribe to my crafters companion youtube channel and for those that hit the bell notification then uh thank you very much as well the bell notification that just means for those that don't know that whenever i upload a tutorial then if you've hit that bell notification for my craig Lear crafters companion youtube channel as soon as i've uploaded it then you will get a notification on your phone or your tablet saying that uh, craig Lear crafters companion has uh, got a tutorial there ready for you to watch if you don't do that it just means that you won't be notified but when you go on your youtube you will see that i've uploaded a brand new tutorial if you have subscribed so those that have already done that thank you so much and for those that continue to give me the thumbs up afterwards i really appreciate that as well within each tutorial and as i say every single time uh, i do read every single comment that you that you leave unfortunately can't reply to them all but i can tell you that i see them all because i've got email notifications set so every single comment that i get I get an email notification let me know who's left it and what they've said so i see every single one so although i don't reply i do see everyone i do reply if it's something that i feel that needs to be answered or uh, i've managed to catch then uh, i will reply to it so thank you thank you so so much but as i say this is all about box making here with our brand new crafters companion mirror pads now i'm going to bring these in and underneath let's go from up above where we're going craig there we go up above here we're going to be using our brand new mirror pads that have just launched on crafters tv i say they're brand new and they've just launched that uh, is as of when i am doing this tutorial now if you're watching this weeks months years down the line well, I've not launched, but as of when you're watching this roundabout now, within the start of April, then, of course, these have just launched. Now, these are 12 by 12. You've got 32 sheets in the Vibrant Metallics, and you've got them at 250 GSM. Now, these ones being the Vibrant Metallics, as I say, and these are mirror printed on to mirror i'm not going to go through them all because with this one we really do just want to delve straight in to the demonstration and that's exactly what we're going to be doing but let's have a little flick through at some of the most incredible quality of mirror versus mirror that should not be in there let's take those out because these go in with the other pad so let's run these ones through and these are just some of the designs that you have got. Now, that being the vibrant, vibrant metallics. But then what you've also got is you've then got the everyday opulence, which are the gold and the silver. Now, you've got silver mirror printed onto silver satin. And then you've got gold mirror printed onto gold satin and vice versa. These are mine that I took to bits for the pack shot of Hobby Maker. But once again you can see all the most beautiful designs that you've got. So the vibrant metallics, these are mirror printed onto mirror. And then when it comes to your everyday opulence of the gold and the silver, these ones here, these are mirror printed onto satin and satin printed onto mirror. So you've got the both, both 
best of both worlds. Now, what I will do within the description across on this tutorial here, I'll add a link to our website so you can grab a hold of them. As I say, if you're watching all this a lot, lot later after I'm doing this tutorial here, then you might find that they are out of stock. But as it is at the moment, I'll put a link that directs you straight to the website and you can click on that if you want to grab a hold of them. But that being your everyday opulence in the Vibrant Metallics. So that is what we're going to be using. We're going to be using the Vibrant Metallics to create the box. Now, for the box, what we're going to do is we're going to create it, size it around something. I've got it here just in front of me here. Now, what we're going to be doing now, it could be bath bombs, it could be uh, sweeties, it could be chocolate, it could be wax melts, which is exactly what I'm away to do here. Now, what I'm away to show you here is just an absolute incredible uh, brand that I have completely fallen in love with. We all know that I'm a big fan of Yankee Candles, have been for years, and I always will be. However, I have tried many, 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 many other brands of wax melts and I, I diss them and ditch them all. Uh, every single one of them. And I never buy them again because I don't like the smell. I don't like the quality. I don't like things like the packaging. I don't like the way they've been set. I just never am happy with them. Then I come across this brand here that I'm away to show you. Now, first and foremost, I am going to link the brand in my descriptions to their social, social pages. Uh, as and when as I am filming this right now, they're a way to go through uh, a rebrand. So their website is a way to close. So I'm not going to tag their website, but I will tag their social pages within the description here so that you can get directed to their social pages and then you can keep on track with the rebrand journey across on their social pages. And then once the brand new website is up and running, then obviously you'll see it across on there. Now I have to say, what I'm doing here, you'll maybe see that I've shared their posts across on my certainly my Instagram, I've tagged them in my Facebook, I'm doing this, I have nothing to do with them, they've not asked me to do anything, I'm not gaining anything from doing this, I'm doing this because I absolutely love the brand, I absolutely love the ethos of the brand, it's a, a lovely girl called uh, Hannah who's the one, it's the idea, it's the company of uh, our um, wax melts that I'm away to just use here and that's lavender, uh, lav lavender and lilac company. As I say, they're going through a rebrand, just a way to go through a rebrand. So therefore, uh, I believe their name will be changing. But so that you might be familiar as to what I have been posting across on my social, these are the wax melts. And the reason I wanted to use these is because, and I am pretty sure that when they come to the rebrand, their um, packaging and that will still be exquisite like it already is here. Now you buy gifts, it could be these, it could be other things, any companies, and you get them in lovely packaging. But as a crafter, we still want to make a box or something like that to put them in. So we keep them in the original packaging, like I would do with Lavender and Lilac uh, Candle Company. But I still want to make an, uh, a box to put the box in. So just to show you once again, like this is how, I mean, the attention to detail is simply phenomenal. I absolutely adore and love lavender. So to have the little lavender flakes of the flowers in there as well, is just absolutely brilliant. The way, as I say, as it's packaged, the way that it's formed, the way that it's put together, just a tiny little company, homegrown company, and I've got some of their candles in that as well when it comes to my bedroom, lilac, uh, lilac, lavender, funny enough. Uh, but these are all hand poured. They're uh, soya wax melts. And I cannot rave about them enough. I'm going to stress once again, I'm not doing this for any reason. It's just that is how much I have absolutely fallen in love with the company, with the brand, their ethos. Going to their, I was about to say going to their website. I've just told you, the website's a way to close. But going to their social, see and read about them. And then once their new website's up and running, then of course you can really delve in to the history of the company. It's only maybe just a couple of years old. So that being said, that is what I'm wanting to make. I'm wanting to make a box for one of their boxes here. This is just an array of the wax melts that I have purchased from them. And I have absolutely purchased from them myself with my own money. And we're going to take, they're all the same size, so it doesn't really matter which ones I'm going to be using. So let's put them out the way. And I want to be making 
a box, a lovely box for their box. I want to keep their original box if I was to be given it as a gift, but I want to keep all of that, keep the detail of the company, but I want to make a box to go with it. So let's take one of our cardstock. Now I already know which one I'm going to be using. And that is this gorgeous purple one. Now this is your purple with your silver mirror printed delightful absolutely gorgeous and that's what we're going to be using now you can use another one for the base of your box but i'm not going to i don't want to use my luxury card for both the lid and the base so what i'm going to use with it is i'm going to be using some of our white centura apparel cardstock that's going to be our base and that's going to be our lid but we'll have to measure it first most things, to keep it really, really simple for you guys here, I'm just waiting to take a very quick drink. Most boxes that I make, I tend to have one inch in depth. I like to have that one inch in depth thickness. You can have a little play about. I'll show you how I measure when it comes to the boxes and then the depth. And then you can follow on suit and then you can take what I've shown you and then create your own measurements. But the first and foremost, the first thing you have to do is get the measurement of what you are wanting to make a box for. Now, when it comes to this box here that um, Lavender and Lilac are using, that is four inch by four inch. So it's four by four. Now, what we also need to take into account is the thickness. So it just so happens that the actual thickness of the box is about one inch, which I like anyway. So let's keep it at that. So my cardstock would need to be four inches plus one inch plus one inch. So that's going to take out or take into account the base of your card, which is one inch, which is going to cover the length of the box, plus one inch depth and one inch depth. So therefore, I'm going to need a piece of cardstock that's six inches. And then, well, it's going to be exactly the same because it's four inches. So my cardstock, four inch plus one inch plus one inch so therefore it's six so my card that i'm going to need is going to be six inches so six inches by six inches and then i'm going to score at one inch all the way round that will then give me one inch four inch and then one inch i'll show you once i actually come to cut and then score now that being one in uh, four inch sorry plus the one inch and the one inch that's going to make it just a little bit snug, just a little bit snug because the base of the box is going to be exactly four inches and that is exactly four inches. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a quarter of an inch. So therefore, this is going to be four and a quarter inches and I still need to add the one inch and the one inch. So it's going to be four and a quarter plus one inch plus one inch. So therefore, my card now needs to be six and a quarter by six and a quarter because it's going to be exactly the same i'll show you once i actually come to do the measuring and the scoring and i'll re-go over what i've just said there now say you wanted the depth to be two inches you're going to follow on suit so four and a quarter plus two inch plus two inch therefore that's then going to be eight and a quarter so whatever the basis of your box is or the product, plus whatever your depth's going to be. So let's go back to the beginning again, and let's take our guillotine here. So if we take our guillotine, I'm just going to zoom out. Now, if we remember, so for our cardstock, I said it's going to be six and a quarter by six and a quarter. So let's take our cardstock and let's cut it to six and a quarter by six and a quarter. Now the great thing, when it comes to our score master or any of our scoreboards, both the lid and the base, the size of the card stays exactly the same, which we'll talk you through the workings of the scoreboard in a minute. So let's take our cardstock, which is going to be our lid, and we're going to cut it exactly the same. Six and a quarter by six and a quarter so that's me now got my two pieces going to be my box lid my box base both of which 
are six and a quarter. So even though one's going to be the lid, one's going to be the base, they're exactly the same size. We're then going to come along with our score master or any of your scoreboards that you like to use. So I'm using the score master here. Now we've got inches on one side, centimetres on the other side. I'm an inch, I like my inches, and I have put black marks down every one inch increment. Now they go one eighth of an inch, they go eighth of an inch all the way along here, but I like to then put black marks, it's easier to see, down every inch. Now when it comes to our score master, this is our box lid side. Now it does tell us down at the bottom that the left hand side is the box lid, and then the right hand side is the box base. I know you can't quite see it here, but if you're familiar with our scoreboards, you'll know exactly what I am meaning. Now, the inches along the top on the box base, these are accurate increments. So that is exactly six and a quarter inches. So if you wanted to use this as a ruler, you absolutely can do. The measurements along the bottom here in inches and again I know it's hard for you to see but you do have your inches that run along now you line that up to the right hand side being the box base these aren't quite true measurements these are just out just by a couple of millimeters and that's to take into account the base so the lid will fit on top of the base now that being said let's start scoring so we're going up box lid side and remember I said that I want to score at one inch all the way round. So I'm going to go up to the one inch mark and then I'm going to score. I'm going to turn that around and then I'm going to score. We're going to turn that around and we're going to score and I always like to score lightly and a few times and then we're going to score lightly in a few times. Now before I do the box base, let's turn that over and you can just make out the score lines. So what I'm going to do as a visual, you're obviously not going to need to do this, but where I've got that those score lines, I'm going to put a pencil line in and we're going to go back and I'm going to talk you through how I got to six and a quarter by six and a quarter. Having now got our score lines. Now, if I tip that, we can just see now we've got our score lines all the way around here. So I'm going to zoom in that a little bit more. There we go. We can just see that better now. So that intersection here, if I bring that in, that intersection from line to line is four and a quarter, like I said, plus we've got our one inch, plus we've got our one inch. So we've got four and a quarter, plus one inch, plus one inch. So that's where I got my six and a quarter inches from. And then of course, the height of the box is exactly the same. Four and a quarter, plus one inch, plus one inch. So whatever your box, whatever your product is, you're going to take the measurement of it and then you're going to add whatever depth you want of the rim all the way round. So that's how we measure what we want to make a box for. So now that we've got our box lid, let's do exactly the same. The only difference this time is with the box base, we're going to go up to the box lid side, which tells us down here, box lid. And we're going to score at the one inch mark. Now remember, the measurements along here are not true measurements because it needs to be taken into account that this needs to be smaller for the lid to fit over the box. Now I find it hard to score upwards. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn that around and then even although the numbers are upside down, it doesn't matter as long as we're scoring at the box base one inch. So we're going to score and we're just going to turn and then we're going to score. We're going to turn and then we're going to score. So 
So that's me done that for our box base. And then what we're going to do is before we go any further, now you can use whichever adhesive you prefer for box making. You need to use your tacky glue or your red liner tape. Your red liner tape is some of, if not the strongest adhesive or stronger, strongest dry adhesive. So I like to add my tape on first and then I'll chop my little notches away. So let's add our tape on. So where we've got the little square crossover, that's where we're going to add our adhesive. And let's turn that around. And then we're going to do that on all four. Press that in. Cut. And then press that in. And then we're going to cut. We're going to do exactly the same now when it comes to the lid. So let's take our red liner tape. Now I'm using a thick one inch red liner tape. Now this is as all of you that watch will be aware that the adhesive that I use is from Styx2. So it's not Crafter's Companion Adhesive. And I always stress Crafter's Companion Adhesives, it's the company that I work for, is incredible adhesive. But I always use Styx2. I have done for like 20 odd years, near 30 years when it comes to crafting. Not 30, 20. 20 years. And I always will. They're just based through in Newcastle, just down the road from me. And that is their red liner tape. One inch red liner tape that I'm using. Let's give that a really good press in. And then we're going to do that for the other ones. Just press that in. You can take your bone folder if you want to, your scoring tool, and give it a really good press. And then what we're going to do is we're going to fold our lines. So let's fold them over and give it a good burnish. So we're going to burnish. We're going to fold. Give it a burnish. And then fold and give it a burnish. So we've got our score lines. And then we're going to do the same. Now I'm just going to be a little bit more careful because it's a coated cardstock. Mirror printed on a mirror. And then press and burnish. Press and burnish. What we need to do, let's do the base first is we need to now create little notches and this is why I like to put my tape on first because if we go down to that first score line we're going to cut down to the score line and then we're going to cut a little notch out there like so. Now I like to put my tape on first so therefore my tape goes right to the edge as I'm cutting otherwise if you cut first which you can do it just means it's a little bit more of a faff to put the tape on so i'm going to twist and then cut a notch now it doesn't need to be a specific size notch we're just going to cut down and then cut in we're going to then cut down and then cut in so we're starting to form the base of our box. And then let's take our lid. Let's do exactly the same. It's a coated card, so it can be a little bit more tricky just to see. But we're just doing exactly the same. Cutting down to the score line. And take the notch out. As always, I prefer my small snippy scissors. If you want to use your larger scissors or your medium scissors, you can do it. It's personal preference. Don't let anyone tell you you have to use a specific size scissors. You don't. It's what you feel comfortable using. And then there we go. We've got our box lid and also our box base. So before we assemble all of these, let's do a little topper for our box. 
Now, that is, top part, is four and a quarter by four and a quarter. So I've got some purple linen cardstock. And I'm going to use a little bit of the same cardstock that I used for the base here. So let's bring in my guillotine once again. Let's take our centura pearl with a hint of silver. And I think, so if that top part, the box lid, is four and a quarter by four and a quarter, let's do... I'm going to cut three and three quarters by three and three quarters. Let's bring in my linen card. Let's have a look, actually. Uh, yeah, I think that'll be fine. Do I want it a bit smaller? Actually, I want it a little bit smaller. And actually, I don't want the Centura Pearl. I want crisp white. Let's bring in some crisp white cardstock. Here we go. So I'm going to do, instead of three and three quarters, I'm going to do three and a half by three and a half. Because I don't want to cover too much of the design. I still want to see some of it. And then let's go in with the purple, the purple, um, it's my favourite, I can't remember. Linen card, that's it, linen card. And then this time, let's cut it to three and a quarter by three and a quarter. That's going to be and give us a perfect mat and layer, which is then going to break it up when it comes to the top there. Then what we're going to do, let's move that out of the way. I'm going to use another bit of that pure white cardstock. And I've got some just plain silver mirror card here. So I'm going to use the die sets of Scent With Love. So this is an old sentiment range that we've done. This one's Scent With Love. You know how I love to use old and new. So we get a matte and layer with it, but I don't want the matte and layer die to go with it. I want to use the sentiment on its own. And if you've seen me do this on Hobby Maker, you will see or have seen me have all of this pre-prepped good to go whereas the joyous thing about doing it on my crafters companion youtube channel is i do it in real time so let's take the silver and cut around and then what i'm also going to do with the other bit of white card I'm going to go in with an old range, Scent of Summer. And we're going to go in with a thistle. Do love a thistle. I wonder why. So we're going to use the thistle. And we're going to... We're going to do the thistle twice on white card. Because we're going to colour one. And we're going to do white as a drop shadow. So let's take my junior plates here so if i bring in my junior plates into here so let's bring them in and then i'm just going to try i do i remembered to line up another camera to my gemini so i'm just going to quickly move that into shot so you can see what I'm doing in a minute. Right, so let's go base cutting plate. So we've got the base cutting plate here. Let's take our thistle. I'm going to use my, let's use my washi tape up again. I'm starting to get through it because I use it to tape my dies down. So we've got our thistle and then let's do scent with love. Let's take that off. Now these, although I'm using my large G2 machine, I'm using my junior plates. These will still go through your smaller die cutting machines. So we're going to go frosted, magnetic, and then top plate. And then I'm going to feed them through my Gemini here. 
temperature, I've switched it on. So we're going to feed that through our G2. That's of course going to cut it out. And as that comes out the other side, let's take and move that in. So we've now got our thistle. So we've got our thistle in white. And then what we've also got is we've got our scent with love sentiment. So let's pop these out here. So we've got scent. Now you just need to be careful because it's really, really detailed with light swirls. We've got with, we've got love, and I've even got just there the little dot for the eye. So we've got scent with love. Now I need to do that again within my silver card so we can do a drop shadow. I'm just going to set that carefully out the way. Remember, flip and rotate your plates. Let's pop that on, tape it down, bring in the thistle again, other piece of cardstock. Let's tape that down. And then same plate configuration, frosted, magnetic, and then top plate. I'm going to run that one through our G2. Let that go. And as that runs through, we can take that out. And then pop that one. So there's our other thistle. So one we're going to keep white. And then one we're going to colour with my tri-blends. So we've got love in the silver. We've got with in the silver. And just be careful because you've got some fine filigree detail. We've got scent. And then where is... That's not my dot, is it? No. Where's my little silver dot gone for the eye? Is it about somewhere? It must be somewhere. You would think. There we go. There we are. Right, so I'm going to set... Actually, let's... Tell you what. Let's colour first and then we'll glue. Now I'm going to go in. We need a scrap bit of cardstock, as always. Because it's alcohol colouring. So we want a bit of scrap card. So that just means when we do our alcohol colouring, the alcohol will start to... I seem to have a white haze around my cameras today. I don't know what it is. Anyway, let's crack on. So yes, yeah, so what we want to do, scrap bit of cardstock underneath... We start to colour through, this could saturate onto your glass mat, the ink will then start to pull and then suck back up into your card, which you don't want. So we're going to go on a scrap bit of card and I'm going to use my tri-blends. I'm going to use the jade green blend. So if you're new to the tri-blend, we've got light, we've got medium and then we've got dark. So let's start with the light and I'm going to do sections because it is alcohol base. So to get a nice blend, you don't want to do a too big a section, otherwise the initial light layer of alcohol will evaporate and it makes it a little bit harder for you to blend. So let's go in with a light tone. I'm going to leave kind of like a preserved highlight within the middle there. I'm now going to flip to the other side, which is the dark color. And I'm going to come in just a few mils all the way round, all the way round, saturating our cardstock. I'm now going to go into the mid-tone and we're going to blend that out and I'm just crossing over into that dark tone. I'm not going right over it, 
just crossing over and then I'm going to go back to that light tone and do a little bit of blending. I'm going to go back again at the dark tone just to add a little bit more finer detail on that outer edge and you can keep going back just adding detail, light detail. Alcohol will evaporate and you start to see more of a blend back in with the light again just to finish that off we're going to then go into this one kind of the bud and i'm going to work my way round leaving a little bit of a preserved highlight once again i'm going to go into the dark and i'm just going to come to the left hand side and the left and the right hand side try and get that cylinder effect circular effect i'm going to use the mid tone cross that over blend out and back in with that light tone once again within the middle just to finish it off like i say the alcohol will start to evaporate but you start to get that blend that depth and then for the remaining one, let's go back, or the remaining part of our thistle. I'm not going to overcomplicate it. I'm just going to lay that light tone down. I'm really going to focus on the light and the medium. I'll add a little bit of the dark tone of the jade green. But I'm just really focusing on that light tone. Lay it make sure that you've got a really really good coverage of the light tone so that you can get a nice blend color that in and as i say i'm just going to go more within that mid-tone i'm just going to come around and the little finer edges of the thistle. I'm going to come along here and then I'm going to come down here. I don't want to over complicate it. I don't want to think too much. I just want to get that shading down slightly and then I'm going to go into the dark tone but I'm just this is where I'm only just adding just the finest of little nod of dark tone. Just rounding down the edges here. If I bring that up into here, so we're starting to get that shade. I'm going to add, do I want to add any more actually? I don't think so. I'm actually going to add just a little bit more of the dark tone around there, down. Just where I originally lay it down. And then I'm going to go back. I just want to kind of shade and darken that just a little bit more with the dark tone. Okay, right. Mid tone. And blend out. And then light tone. And blend it so you can always go back and add depth if you want to i'm happy with that but to enhance it that little bit more before we go and do the tip i've got white white gel pen love my white gel pen so we'll use that within a second but what we'll do is we'll just go along the top here so this is the hydrangea blend of our tri blends so i'm just going to go in with a light tone along the tip and then I'm going to carve down and around in with the mid tone down blend that out and then just finish off with that light tone blend that out so you can see that really starts to show off as well the blend and then 
with the gel pen that I've got, I'm just going to kind of enhance just the highlight lines, just like little squiggles, little squiggles. I'm just going to come round there, just light little scratches, essentially. I'm going to, actually, I'm just going to do just a little bit more there. I'm just going to come round there. And let's do just a couple of little scratches there. And then there. It's amazing the difference that the white gel pen can make. As I say, I don't know why I've got this kind of... You've even got it there. I wonder if it's because it's still daylight. I don't think I've actually done many videos in daylight at this time of night on daylight. Or maybe it's my light. I don't know, but I've got a little bit of a hit. Maybe a ghost. It's maybe paranormal. Oh, I wish. I wish. Right, let's crack on. So let's take our blank one. And let's take our tacky glue, which is here. So we'll take our tacky glue. I'm going to use that again, just to show you the drop shadow. So on the back, Let's add our tacky glue. And we're going to add that all the way round and down. And then we're going to do our drop shadow. So I'm going to hover straight over the top. And then I'm going to come down to the bottom right hand corner just by a little mill or so. And press that in to create that white shadow, that white drop shadow, which enhances the white gel pen. Now, if you got the Academy of Colour, you'll have got a white gel pen in there, or one of the Spectrum Noir boxes, we had a gel pen in there. But there we go, we've got our coloured thistle with our white drop shadow. And then talking to drop shadow, Let's bring this in and we're going to do silver on the top with white on the base. So on the back of the silver, I'm going in with my tacky glue all the way around the fine detail. If you've got your double sided adhesive sheets or your dotty tape runner, you can use that. But the tacky glue is always my go-to because we've got that little bit of wiggle room. I'm going to overlay and I'm going to pull down slightly so we get that white drop shadow. Let's find my pokey tool. Move that into place. Press that in. And then let's just press so once again. We've got the silver, but with that white drop shadow. Let's move that out of the way. Let's do the width. And then what I'm going to do is that tiny little dot on the top of the eye. I'm going to do that last. I'm going to do that once the box is assembled. I'm just going to tap some of that excess off. Move press and then let's just wiggle that into position because we've got the tacky glue we can do that where it's a little bit harder to do that if you're using our dotty tape runner or our double-sided adhesive sheets that's a bit harder because it's an instant stick so then there we go we've got the with love it makes it a little bit more dimensional because it's thicker and then you've got that white drop shadow and then let's take the love and we're going to do exactly the same. So let's add our glue all the way around there. Tap some of that excess off. And then let's press that in. Let's hold that in. And then there we go. We've got that drop shadow with the love. I just want to make sure that 
my two little teeny dots with the top of the eye. I don't want to lose them, so let's move them out the way just for now. Move that out the way. Let's zoom back in and let's assemble the box. So let's assemble. Uh, let's assemble the layer first. Yeah, let's actually assemble this first. I'm going to put the thistle to the left hand side because that will sit on top but it's always easier to decorate your box in the wrong direction it's always easier to decorate the box or the layers before you um, assemble the box so that's the way that's going to go move that out of the way so let's take our tape oh, I never stocked up my tape did I, after my last one Right, so, tacky glue it is. You know what I'm like? I do prefer my double-sided adhesive tape, but I used the last of it on my last tutorial, and I've not stocked up. It's in my spare room. It's in a box in my spare room. So let's use our tacky glue instead. That's going to go... That layer, this layer, is going to go on a foam pad, or foam pads. So let's press, and then let's position these ones so I want a little bit of an overhang to the left hand side there there so let's I'll contain it just yeah yeah happy with that let's move that up ever so slightly yeah I like that. So let's take our adhesive once again. I'm just using my tacky glue. I don't need to go right to the top or right to the bottom because we've got that bit of an overhang. So let's position that here. So let's hold that down just for a second. Sticks to glue, it doesn't take long to dry at all. Neither does Colal if you're using our Colal glue. Hold that in. I'm going to do the middle one first, so I've got the positioning correct. So let's go in with the fine detail. Let's pop that in there. Hold it. And I'm going to go in with the love. And do exactly the same. Falling around. No matter what sheet of the mirror pad you use, this will look fab. Let's go that way. Press that in. Press that in. And then last but by no means least, let's take the scent. Work our way round. If you're using our Colal Tacky Glue, I would highly re recommend you pop it into small the small application. If you're using Sticks 2, then you already get the little metal tip. And then let's go back into there. Like so. And press. And then this is where I'm going to do dots first so I'm going to do the white first and then put the silver on top so there's the dot another dot of glue let's put the silver and the glue will dry clear so don't worry about that whether it's sticks to it or whether it is our collar glue Let's just... I knew that was going to happen. Oh, no, it's there. I thought I flicked it away there for a minute. I thought, typical, I knew that was going to happen. Right, let's pick that up. Pop that into there, doing our little drop shadow. And the white, just into the background. And then there we go. We've got our scent with love, using our tri blends purple linen cardstock, white cardstock, and silver mirror card. 
Now let's take some foam pads and we're going to give that a little bit of lift on top of our box. We don't have to, of course, it is optional. So let's pop that there, press that in. Uh, even on a card, little card, that would look nice. But let's bring in our box base now. And let's take the back end off here. Here. And here. And then we're going to then bend that over and then we're just going to press that in. We're going to miter the corner, create that 90 degree angle. So turn twist and press, turn, twist and pre press. So turn that in and then this edge, we want to go right into there, press that in and then we've got our box base. Then we're going to go in with the lid and we're going to do exactly the same. So let's take that back and off. Hold that in. We'll see the red liner tape at the back and can get a bit staticky. I'm just going to hold it, peel it off and hold it. Press. And then we're going to do exactly the same. So we're just going to Twist and turn that over. We're going to then twist and turn that over. Turn, twist, press, and then turn, twist, and press. And then let's go all the way around, making sure we have got that nicely pressed and nicely adhered to. So there is our box base, there is our box lid, and then the moment of time, that goes into there, and then our lid goes on into there. And then we can come along, and let's take our foam pads off, and that can sit into there and we've now got our box lid we've got our box lid and then we've got our box base perfectly fits whatever sized object that you want to pop inside pop the lid on and then you've got your gift box measure to size whatever size that you want We've used our scent of summer die set for our thistle and then the sentiment is from our expression range of scent with love. Remember these are old crafters companion ranges so you won't find them on the website but the cardstock that I've used is brand new cardstock so you'll find that on the website. And then there we go. Let's bring that back in once again just so that you can see a little bit close up. If I bring that in, scent with love, box lid all the way round, like so, and then that does fit the 4 by 4 box, like that, inside, and then there you go. There is your box. So that's how you measure whatever object, whatever product that is you want to make a box for. As I say, I've wanted to do it with the Lavender and Lilac uh, Candle Company. Do remember, as I said, right at the very start there, uh, I'm not going to link their website onto the description within this one because they're going through a rebrand as it stands. As it stands at the moment, the day I'm filming this, come tonight, their website's closing down for a new website to uh, start up. So what I will do within the description is I will link their Facebook page and their Instagram page within the description of this video and you can keep up to date across on their social channels as to their uh, new uh, 
company rebrand as well as the products that they're going to be doing so all of that will be in the description i will add the description for the pads and that as well anything else i can whether it's from sticks to i will all add that within the description of this tutorial and if you do make anything off the back of the tutorial and you post them on the social pages do remember of course to give me a tag now whether it is of course facebook of course um or if you are on youtube it doesn't matter whether it's youtube tiktok instagram facebook they are all craig laird cc so you'll find me across there but yeah if you tag me certainly within stories or anything like that i'll always do my best to share them to my stories and give you a, a tag as well so once again thank you so much for tuning in here on my crafters companion youtube channel i will see you again very very soon for another tutorial take care see you later bye